The previous video introduced the notion of arc length. Using arc length, I can deal with a problem that I hinted at a couple of videos ago. I said that the same shape as a parametric curve can have infinitely many different parameterizations. When I want to study movement along the curve, this is good, since the parameterization captures the fine details of movement. However, when I want to just consider the shape itself, regardless of movement, I run into some trouble. Which parameterization should I use to study the shape? In this video, using arc length, I introduce the parameterization by arc length, a parameterization that will serve as the unique choice for questions about the shape of the curve itself. To define this parameterization, I need to start with the arc length function. In the previous video, arc length was a number, the length of the whole curve. However, I can also define arc length as the length of the curve up to a particular point in time. This gives a function of time, s of t. The function is defined as the arc length, but now t is just the upper bound of the integral, calculating the length but only up to some time t. And since I now use t outside the integral, I need to use another variable inside the integral to avoid confusion, and the conventional choice here is u. If the curve starts at t equals zero, then s of t is how far the curve has traveled in t units of time. If the units are second, then s of three is how far the curve goes in three seconds, s of seven is how far the curve goes in seven seconds, and so on. Now I have the arc length function. To reparameterize a parametric curve, I need to replace t with some other expression in another variable. The arc length function is s of t. If I invert it, I can get some expression t of s. Then I can replace. This is the algorithm to parameterize by arc length. First, calculate the arc length function s of t. Invert s of t to get some expression t of s. This is always possible in theory, but not always in practice. That is, the inverse exists, but it might not be writable in terms of the usual functions we work with. Then reparameterize by replacing t with this expression t of s. The result is the parameterization by arc length. So why is it special? Well, by changing to the parameter s, the length is now the parameter. This means that the curve always starts at s equals zero, and when s equals one, the movement has exactly been one unit of length. And when s equals two, exactly two units of length, and so on. This is the unique parameterization where time and distance are the same. Let me do an example. Here's a helix in R3. The curve is two cos t, two sin t, four t. Hopefully you can recognize the circle, cos t, sin t, with radius two in the xy coordinate spots. The growth in the z-coordinate gives the helix form as it gains elevation while still spinning around the horizontal circle. I follow the algorithm. I calculate the arc length function, taking the derivatives of the individual coordinates. I change the variable to u to avoid confusion of doubling the t variable, and I use trig to simplify the integrand, and then to evaluate the integral and to get s of t equals t times root 20. This is an easy function to invert t is s divided by root 20. Then I replace this t in the function. The resulting parameterization in the s parameter is precisely the parameterization where that s equals four, say, is four units of distance along the helix, and s equals 10 is 10 units of distance along the helix, and so on. Let me finish this video with an important observation about arc length. Here again is the arc length integral. The term inside the integral is precisely the length of the tangent. The tangent has components which are the derivatives, and the length squared of those components and taking the square root gives the length of the tangent vector. Therefore, the length can be calculated by integrating the length of the tangent vector along the curve. And there's a little bit more here even. Consider the arc length function I defined before, s of t. I can interpret this function the same way as the integral of the length of the tangent using again the variable u inside 
to avoid confusion with a variable t outside. Then I can differentiate this. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that the derivative of an integral just gives the original function back. Therefore, the derivative of the arc length function is the length of the tangent vector. But that length is just speed, so the derivative of the arc length function is the speed of the curve, forgetting momentarily about what direction it's going in. And hopefully this makes perfect sense. The derivative of length, arc length, should indeed be speed, the length of the tangent vector. 